As it was said by the president of MCHEM in the beginning, foreign investors are quite critical. Uh, that's well known of the business environment in Slovenia. Too much of red tape in all areas, special planning, spatial planning, tough conditions to perform the business. Very unpredictable, you would agree, probably legal and regulatory framework, and not to mention the so-called national interest. And if we add to that a many of failed sale processes of some Slovenian companies, the picture is even worse on the international scene, how the foreign investors see us. But on the other side, you and your government, you personally, and also the government, expressed the interest to open the country to the foreign investors. You mentioned uh, that you want to you know, decrease the barriers for the investments, but could you tell us a little bit more when we can expect that and how we will actually raise the credibility of the country for the foreign investors? Yeah, I think um, one, one of the first measures is already these tax adjustments that I was explaining. Um, it's also meant partly as a signal uh, that the policy is changing in Slovenia. I think the, the investor community also appreciates the efforts we are doing to balance the budget. Um, but there are probably more important things, uh, like you mentioned, the regulations in, in the spatial planning and, and environmental planning and also in the labor market, which is something that the government has in its program, and I'm confident that the ministry will work on this this year. So there will be some changes during the year. And I think what would count most would be some good examples of, of foreign investment this year or maybe early next year. Um, a good uh, solution for, for the problem of the bank would also be a, a strong signal. Um, so. We also have a feeling that we have created some interest, but now we have to live up to it. But Minister, uh, we, we both were in the past yeah. uh, part of the bureaucracy, I would say, or the government. The most difficult is to change the mindset of the bureaucrats, of the public servants. Not always the regulation is the reason for mm. uh, very inefficient service we receive from the administration. Will you deal with them as well? Uh, yes, of course, but uh, we have um, already, um, we, we replicate the good examples of, of the five years ago, or four years ago, when there was in the Ministry of Public Administration a special directorate for dealing with administrative burdens, and there was a special council of people from business and from practice that have actually brought proposals or considered proposals by other people. We are also trying to, we, we also establish a similar council for sensible public expenditure. So we get, now I, every day I get three or four emails from people telling me, uh, you know, there's a possible saving, you know. Not all these proposals are totally sensible, but a lot of them are. Uh, so we set up a special group of, of you know, cost-aware people, how should I call them, to deal with this and also, um, a, a special group of people that hate bureaucracy, that deal with <laughs> administrative burdens. Uh, and I think it's, it's if you have, and uh, there are some good examples, as, as you know, also from the past, if you have a head of a ministry or, or of, a, of a directorate uh, who knows or um, what he or she is, wants to do and, and has a good knowledge of the problems and is, is responsive to the problems, then things change. You know, because the bureaucrats at the end are very adaptable people. Um, so they want to, you know... I if, would if, not if, really agree No, no, I mean, if you, if you, no, no, if you, if you let them do what they want, and, and, if you, and if you listen to them too much, then they get the feeling that they have the power over you, and that's not good. But as long as they have the feeling that you know what you want from them, and you're able to tell them, then, then it works, uh, or it, it starts changing the mentality. I do hope you're right and that we will not <laughs> hear any more in the future cases when, where even Slovenian investors decided to go across the border because of the administra administrative burdens on our side or long processes to get, the, for example, the okay. building permit. Let me to ask you something. As a former uh, professor, lecturer of the University of Primorska, 
Do you think Slovenian educational system is good enough to prepare our young people to compete on global markets? We are not competing only in Slovenia. We are competing on global markets. Are, is it good enough? And additionally to that, is the public sector public attractive enough for very good experience, good experts, professional workforce to perform the best? I do strongly believe, those who you know I, when I was in the government, I do strongly believe that the best service of public sector is the precondition for a good condition of the economy of the country. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, if, you, if you look at some international comparisons of the quality of our higher education system, which is the part I know best, these comparisons are not very favorable. So we are not very high on any kind of um, comparisons. Um, on the other hand, we have a lot of young educated people that have gone abroad and make a good career. So at least they've got a, a, a good basis for doing that. Uh, and it, a lot depends on the indi individual here. Um, so, you know, you can learn a lot if you want. But uh, if you don't want, I mean, uh, the, the majority is probably not on, on the same level as they would be in, in, in the countries with the best educational system. That's certainly true. Um, and uh, the public sector, I think, if you want to work in the public sector, you also need the mindset that uh, you are committed to doing something uh, good as a public servant. Uh, and I know a lot of people, I mean, when I, when I walk through the ministry at 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening, I, I meet a lot of people who are still working. And they're not working because they're paid to stay there till nine o'clock, but because they think, um, I don't know, it's, it's important to do this work. Uh, and uh, it would be good to change the system and we'll try to do, but this will take some time because now, as you know, we have this adjustment of the level of wages, but in, in future, we will try to create a system in which people who work best in the public sector will also be uh, uh, you know, rewarded accordingly. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Minister, a huge part of the Slovenian economy is still state-owned. As you mentioned before, you have intentions to sell it. Uh, the same intentions were also, you know, at least on declaration level, uh, set up by previous governments. But despite all that, uh, one has a feeling that pol politicians like the status as it is. Uh, study published by EBRD and also by the Economic Faculty of University of Ljubljana shows that actually state-owned companies are managed worse because of the political appointees in their supervisory boards. Of course, you decided differently, but will you succeed? Um, well, um, this is this is the second step of what we are what I explained before the changing uh, of our architecture of, of the management of the public uh, um, public property or public ownership in the companies, and I think uh, what what we should do is just clearly say um, which is the investment which is not for sale and which is an investment which should be managed as any kind of normal investment. Uh, and it was often announced, but never, never made in the past for different reasons. Uh, and I think everyone will understand, uh, and most of the governments have assets that they are not willing to sell. But um, uh, when they have assets which are on the market, and sometimes nobody is interested in that. But <laughs> so, at least a clear delineation would would help a lot. Because what we are doing wrong in this country is that we say, okay, this asset is for sale, and then you know, two weeks before the sale, we say, oh no. We've changed our minds, and that's that's really embarrassing, and we shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> I hope you will succeed yeah. with that. One last question I would like to raise to you, and then we will give the floor to the audience. We are now dealing, or your government is now dealing, as you know, as you mentioned in your presentation, mainly with the measures which should be taken to solve the crisis we are in. But on the other side. This country and all the people here, I believe we need some kind of focused agenda, what kind of country we would like to live in in 2020, 2030. 
let's say, Agenda 2030? Are you thinking about it? What are your, or you plan to do something in this regard? And of course, to get the broadest, the widest consensus on it. Yeah, I'm glad that this date is, is moving forward. Now <laughs> because, um, <laughs> because I think uh, now we have a very clear agenda of, of fiscal responsibility and, and uh, simplifying the business environment. And uh, I really think that uh, businesses should not come to the government and ask what would be the, the uh, direction of economic development of the country because the direction of economic development of the country will be whatever the business do right and is successful in it. Um, but if you ask me, I would like to have a small, efficient and very open country um, which would be respected uh, abroad and which would have a really good flow of people outside but also inside the country and, and of the business inside and outside the country. And that, you know, I sign it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's get the, the consensus among all the, the parts in Slovenia. Well, well, the consensus on nice words is very easy to find, <laughs> but the consensus on the measures to follow it's, these nice words is the problem. It's more difficult. <laughs> I have one question for you, okay. because I think it bothers many, um, let's say, owners in the private sector as well. Also foreign banks, which became true, you know, yeah. debt to equity swap member, uh, shareholders in the Slovenian companies. Would you invest in the company if you cannot really control its corporate governance? You know, we have cases here in Slovenia that shareholders or owners are not really performing their rights. I have to raise this question to you. Well, I'm a small investor. I have some shares of some companies and there I have no control uh, over corporate <laughs> governance. But these are companies for which I believe that other people govern them well. So, <laughs> but if I if I had a lot of money to invest somewhere, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, Mr. Minister, thank you for your time, your thoughts, your information you shared with us. I do believe and I do hope that you also got abundance of new ideas from our members. We as AMCHAM. I hope we all share this and me personally wish you all the success in the, your endeavors in the future. Knowing you, of course, I am very hopeful on the outcome. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. And again, let me finish with what I said before. Um, you should also talk to the people. Don't let just trade unions and the government yeah. talk to the people.